Support the channel on another round boxing store. Click the link in the description. Welcome to another episode of Another Round. I'm here myself, Mike Thomas, my co-host Hamza Hanif. Today we're going to go of a massive pack weekend of boxing. Um, Hellenius and Wilder, Haney and Cambosis. It was all going off. The women's were fighting. It was an amazing weekend. Uh, what did you think of all of it? It was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, it was almost it was almost like there was so many fights to keep up with in so many different time zones. Yeah, uh, it was it, it, it was a bit of it was a bit of a hard one, really, as a fight fan, because you were uh, like, what do I watch and what time do I watch it and where do I watch it? And like, I had you know? to put two TVs up. I'm quite lucky in, in America because stuff isn't because in, in England, a lot of times it's on like crazy time, like four in the morning and stuff. So pretty good that. You know, with the way it kind of planned out, I got to see every single thing, every fight, so it was good. But um, let's start with Wilder then. What did you think? Obviously, first round knockout, very convincing win. Obviously, his first uh, fight back since he's lost to Fury. Um, I see a new energy in him. I think he, when I've watched him train, he looks he looks kind of improved. I feel like he's throwing different punches. Even that knockout was kind of different to what he normally does. Um, and he was throwing a new hook and stuff in training, which I liked. Um, yeah, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, there wasn't really much to see, was there? Yeah. Because <laughs> obviously, it was, it was one of those where, um, and I think me and you discussed this, um, on the podcast actually that we yeah, didn't think been... that, that, that we didn't think it would be super competitive, and it was one of those things at 38 years old, does Hellenius have the appetite to get it up after yeah, taking yeah. those hard shots. Well, I said um, inside four rounds. I didn't think it was going to be the first. I didn't think it was going to be. I didn't minute. think it was going to be. Yeah, that surprised me as well, to be fair. That did surprise me. I actually didn't um, see it. I was watching it live. It was that fast. I was watching the fight live. I looked at my phone and he'd been knocked <laughs> I looked up and he'd been knocked out, man. And I missed yeah, it. Yeah. And then I, I think Hilarious could have got up, man. I, I think that man could have got up, but still, listen, I think I think there's I think it's one of those situations where maybe he could have got up, but it's like if I get up, I'm gonna take a good beating now. Like he's gonna mm -hmm. he's he's gonna come right to me and he's gonna put it on me. Yeah. And it's like what it's not like you know, his last fight was against Konaki. Oh, like no, he yeah. He hits hard, but it's it, it's a different spectrum with Wilder. So if if I think if I think hurt, it shows the level of power and power punching power that Wilder has compared to Kawanaki, like because he took a lot of pun uh, punches in that fight between Kawanaki and both of them actually, and he still convincingly beat uh, Kawanaki. So yeah, styles make fights. Kawanaki is a lot shorter than um, Hellenius. Hellenius was you know punching down, had a lot more reach, and Wilder's obviously. A little bit, I think he's an inch taller, and Hellenius and Wilder are like the same height almost. So they're very athletic as well as New Wilder. He's very quick. Very he, quick. He moves in and he out. looked quick. He moves, he, looked, he moves in and out for a big guy. Looked better um, at 214, 214 pounds is a much better weight for him. I didn't like him, you know, bulking up for uh, Fury 3 because he was not as fast as his normal self. Do you know what I mean? He wasn't as quick. Yeah. And obviously yeah. that didn't work out in his favor, but yeah, no, he looks he looks like he's better. I'm excited to see him fighting again. I'm so happy he's back in heavyweight fighting because, you know, like he's a personality that you want in boxing. Uh, he's a personality, yeah, and he rubs up people the wrong way. He says some crazy wild stuff, but you want him for the entertainment value. Like he's an entertainer. He's always going to sell tickets because people, number one, they people love him. People hate him too. And he yeah. also says stuff that's entertaining and he does entertaining stuff. It's like a perfect yeah. mix. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like 100%. Mayweather, yeah. Mayweather people would always sell out because people want to see him lose or people want to see him win. But the added factor with Wilder is he's a bit more of a flamboyant. He kind of wears crazy stuff. He prepares like what he says. He says like funky quotes and you know what I mean? Like he says funny stuff. And I think he gets a lot more attention. Uh, and he's and he's an entertaining to watch him fight because he fucking knocks people out yeah, <laughs> in yeah. such an amazing way. Um, so yeah, so Wilder obviously that seemed like it was a very easy fight for him. Um, we predicted that would be the case, 
wasn't sure if Hilarious would give him more of a fight, but it was always going to be one result. And um, I think now he's looking ahead where he can go. And obviously he wants to regain his uh, WBC belt. Um, he said in the press, or I don't know if it was him, but it was leaked in the press, he wanted to fight either Joshua or Usyk. Both of those fights, I'm very excited to see. I would love to see either of those. Um, yeah. And then just also as well, mate, we just uh, just before we came on, it was announced that the WBC have ordered Andy Ruiz Jr. and Wilder as a WBC title eliminator. So the winner that's of- the fight. That, that's the fight that I want to see. If, yeah, me if, too. If, if I could, if, if I could pick two fights for Wilder next, yeah. my two fights for him would be Ruiz and Joshua in that order as well. So yeah. I, I would like to see him fight Ruiz and then I would like to see him fight Joshua. Um, it's 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 one of those where Ruiz has, has earned the right as well. You know, he, he's lost the weight. He's fought OTs. He's come back. He mm-hmm. looks great. He's, 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 he's under the same sort of stable. Um, and it's just, it's, 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 it's quite a good yeah. matchup as well. It's quite an intriguing matchup because Ruiz, despite him being a shorter, sort of more compact fighter, he's mm-hmm. got those quick hands. He's got the, he's, he's, he, he does have magic. Ruiz, you know, he's one of those when he fights, it's hard to kind of look away from the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, so and he's got quite a big following as well. Right. And obviously, the fight against Joshua and Wilder, the build up and stuff like that, the, the, that that would be epic mm-hmm. in itself, you know. And it's a fight that's been talked about for years, years and years and years. And I think, I think they're at a position now where mm-hmm. Wilder's no longer in a position where I'm a champion and I, I must hold up this belt, must stay in America no matter what. Yeah. Um, and you have, you have to bow down to me and, and my demands. I think he's in a position now where he's like, I'm going to have it with, with these guys. You know what I mean? Because I've got four, three or four fights left in my career and I, and I want them to, I want to maximize that. So yeah, it's, it's some exciting. Fighting fights coming up for him, man. Definitely. Yeah, uh, you made some. You made a really good point about the Andy Ruiz fight. Number one, they're both obviously in the same stable. Very easy fight to make. Both under the same network. Put it on um, Fox pay per view. You know, hopefully it's not on pay per view, but it probably will be. So, but then yeah, it's easy it to be. make it. Of course, it, it will be. Of course, it will be. Um, and it's going to be an easy fight to make, mate. And that'll be a great fight, both in terms of what you just said. You know, stylistically. Um, you know, given we get the the agile to, um, Andy Ruiz and not the Taco Bell Andy Ruiz that turn up to <laughs> Joshua. You've uh, got to be insane to come in that heavy against Wilder. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Because yeah. like, you're going to be a sitting duck in there against Wilder. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if you're that fat, you can't move around. It, so it's, we'll it's know if your... it's, um, you know, as as uh, Canelo says, if it's a payday, payday, or if he's like... <laughs> Taking it seriously because we'll know by based on the size of the man. If he comes in like a Taco yeah. Bell, Andy Ruiz, he's in serious <laughs> trouble. But um, if he's not, if he's the agile Andy Ruiz, look, that's going to be a great fight because he's quicker than uh, uh, Wilder. We know he's much faster than Wilder. He's got quick hands and he can move around the ring. Um, he's, got, he's got a chin on him as well. He's got a chin and he's got, got a heart on him, him as well. Yeah, you remember the fight where he, with the, the fight where he um. He got dropped in the Ortiz fight. Got up, kept scrapping. Yeah. He, he, if you want, if you remember the Joshua fight, he had been dropped before before he went right at Joshua. Yeah. So it, it takes a certain level of heart and and chin to get yep. up, absorb those big shots from these big big guys, and just yep. go right back to them. You know, yeah. if you if you think back to the AJ fight, um, he he just been dropped before he went right back at AJ and and mm-hmm. then proceeded to batter him all over the ring. Um, and the same thing with the Ortiz fight. I mean, I, he was well in control of that fight, in my opinion. But he still, he still got dropped. He still had his, you know, he still had his moments of, of, of madness, and he, he got back up, regained composure, and went on to win. Um, th- that's very important because these are big, big guys. Especially Ruiz himself is quite a compact guy. He's not, he's not the tallest guy. He's getting hit by big guys, and he's absorbing it, and he's coming back, and he's doing damage. So I think that that's another thing that makes this fight between him and Wilder very exciting. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's probably, out of all the fights, I hope that fight gets made because that's the fight that I want to see next. Um, I'd love to see Wilder versus Joshua at some point. Um, but right now, I think Ruiz, a Ruiz Wilder would be great. Um, and obviously, it kind of leads to what Wilder's wanting. So I can see him going that direction. And then uh, moving on to uh, the Haney-Cambosis fight. 
obviously we kind of covered it last uh, episode as well. We talked about it. We thought it was going to be same, same result, same conclusion. It was pretty much. Um, I saw that um, Campos has tried to rough it up a little bit more this time. He did try to get in, uh, get Haney into a bit of a dogfight, but it didn't really work. Yeah. Uh, Haney's I think, too big. I think it's well. one, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I think it's one of those. I, I, I think he definitely did better than he did last time, and he, he certainly didn't look as lost in there as he, you know, he, he definitely had a game plan and stuck to it. Mm. Um, but I think it's one of those man, the styles that they fight. Um, I think. They, those two could fight a hundred times, and I think Haney would win a hundred times. I think it's yeah. just one of those where I, I, he just has his number type of thing. Yeah. That being said, Cambosis, you know, he was putting pressure on him right to the final bell. Um, wasn't the most effective pressure, you know, but he was still he was still in that fight. He was still trying to win that fight, um, which is, you know, a credit to him really because he got battered the last time. You know, he, he got thoroughly outclassed. For him to want to do it again, um, and 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 which he did, um, I, 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 you know what it is, I, th- I think Cambosis did a lot better this time. But that being said, it was still a shutout victory for Haney, like we predicted. Yeah, yeah. and Haney, you know, like we we kind of discussed it. He looks so drained at the weight. Like he he's a very dedicated fight. Like he. The amount, like he's willing, I like Haney because he's willing to take on challenges. He'll go abroad to fight. He will lose, you know, he will um, put a lot of hard work to get down to that weight because he's clearly too big to be at one, three, five. And he He looked looked like like a fuck. He looked like a He looked terrible. I think we're used to seeing stuff like that in the UFC. Um, you know, yeah. I, I feel like in MMA, you see that a little bit more. People completely dead on the weights. You know, you see, yeah, yeah. I've seen fighters pass out on the weights um, yeah. in the UFC and stuff like that. And I mean, even Conor McGregor at 145 pounds, you know, yeah. he looks insane. Um, but that that's the first time in, 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 in a boxing event in a very long time. I remember looking at the fighter and thinking, God, you don't look healthy at all. I know, and I know he's gonna rehydrate and he's gonna, you know, on fight night, he's gonna be a different guy, but it's still, it's still it, 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 it did look a bit, you know, it didn't look it didn't look the best, you know. Yeah, yeah, it didn't look good. Um, so I would imagine he's gonna move up now. I would hope so. That's unless he has that fight with Lomachenko. If that fight is made with Lomachenko. Uh, it's interesting to know, will there be some kind of allowance on the weight? If not, will they be fighting at 135, which I'd imagine. Um, I think Haney would still win that fight because I think he's much bigger than Lomachenko. Lomachenko is smaller than... He's either yeah, just the same size bit. as Cambosis, I think, or maybe a little bit smaller. But um, a little bit smaller. I prefer Haney to move up, to be honest. I think he should be moving up to the next weight category. There's a lot more interesting fights up there as well. Um, obviously, Lomachenko is a, a very interesting fight. Um, so that would be good if it does go ahead, but I prefer it if he goes to his actual size. And I think he go, needs to go up a weight and fight. Yeah, I, I, bigger guys. I think, it, I think, yeah, 100%. I think he definitely needs to go up a weight, uh, even if, if anything, just for his own health, you know, because yeah. there's, there's, as he gets older. Mm-hmm. Stripping that weight down is going to get harder and harder and harder, and yeah. I think we saw evidence of that on the weekend. So it's yeah. it's I think it's a matter of time really before he before he's um before he's forced to to go up a weight. That yeah. being said, I would like him to stay at this weight for one more fight. I, I would like to see that Lomachenko, Lomachenko fight. fight. Me too. Just yeah. Just because just because I think the way uh, Lopez beat. Lomachenko was by imposing his size and by imposing his will on him. That's not really how Haney fights. Haney fights with that jab, with that fantastic jab, and it would it would be and obviously Loma's got such good movement that it would just be an intriguing matchup to watch to see yeah. can Lomachenko take that jab away from him with his movement mm-hmm. and stuff like that. You know, I'll be very intriguing to see that. But I think I think it it is it you know Haney's got one. Two at the very most, but I would say one big fight left at that weight, and then it's, yeah. it's time to go. Yeah, absolutely. And then some interesting fights up there as well. The next, the weight category. If if he goes up one category, you know we've got Josh Taylor, Jack Catterall. Um, yeah, there's a couple of boys in there that will be interesting. Um, then if he goes up even more, you know you've got welterweight, you've got Crawford, and all them lot. You know, so I don't know yeah, how big yeah. he's going to grow because he's only he's only what 21. He's the youngest, 23. Yeah, yeah. He's the yeah, youngest, 
youngest ever to unify and um, be undisputed. So that's amazing. Um, so yeah, that'll be exciting. I, I, I'm hoping, like you say, it'll be good to see the Lomachenko fight, and then he definitely has to move up. But yeah, uh, moving on to one of my favorite fights of the weekend, actually, just in terms of both in terms of skill, style. I thought it was a very interesting fight. Um, was um, Anthony Duro and um, Caleb Plant. Obviously, we've spoke about this. I'm a big fan of Caleb Plant because I think he's underrated. I think I don't think he gets some as much um, exposure as I think he probably should because I think he's a good fighter. Um, not as well known, um, mm. but you know, is a, but the thing with him is he works very hard. I've seen him training. He is so dedicated. He's not a guy that takes, you know, takes off. No, he doesn't do what Andy Ruiz, eat Taco Bell and drink. And like, he stays on it all the time. He's always ready, you know. Um, yeah. He's very, very yeah. disciplined. His wife works in the entertainment business. So she's always on it too. And she kind of, you know, them two together, they help each other, that, you know, stay on track and stuff. Um, but that fight was was good. A lot of people saying, oh, you know, discredit Kayla Plant because oh, Anthony Zarell's 38. But then also, so are a lot of fighters. Do you know what I mean? How old is Shazora? How old is Luis Ortiz? Yeah. How old is yeah. Do we have to just discredit them because they're older? Well, if they're fighting in the professionals, they've made that choice. We're not we're not just going to say it wasn't a good win for Caleb Plant because the guy's 38, you know. And he was game yeah. for the fight, obviously. He said a lot of trash talking before the fight, which we, you know, was a funny, funny to watch. It was a lot of, um, it was an entertaining press conference and yeah. uh, it was a good knockout. It was a great knockout. I really enjoyed that fantastic, part. Yeah. yeah, it was a fantastic knockout. It was, it was one of the best knockouts I've seen in in, in a little while, actually. Mm. Um, the way he went left hook to the body and then left, left hook upstairs. Yeah, um, was... so he, 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 he doubled up that left hook and um, yeah, he, he, to devastate an effect. Um, I think uh, you made a really good point there actually about, about how he stays in great shape and you could see that on the scales, you know, he, he looked in phenomenal shape. Mm-hmm. And I think you're right as well, you can't just, you can't just be like, oh, he's a 38-year-old man, you know, he, the, the win doesn't mean anything. That's that's not true. Durrell's been fighting at, at, a, at a very high level for a very long time and yeah. As you correctly said, you know, a lot of fighters have an Indian summer where they can, they, they, you know, the, the the twilight part of their career can often be the most successful. Derek I don't think that's the case for Darrell now. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but that being said, I mean, there was a lot of there was a lot of bad blood between those two. A very interesting, uh, very sort of exciting, interesting press conference as well. Yeah. Um, Compared- yeah honestly. Mm-hmm. No, you said Indian summer. I was just thinking of Derek Shazora because Derek Shazora, compared to how he was in the beginning of his career to how he is yeah. now, completely different fire. He's an amazing fire now. Like he's a tough guy for so anybody. Much, so know. much more disciplined, so yeah. much more well rounded, less wild, like more in control of his emotions. Yeah. Like he's, I would actually say he's more. If Derek Shazora had to fight Derek Chisora, yeah, I, I think the Derek Chisora that fought against, um, I don't know. Parker or uh, sorry, Pulev. I apologize. Yeah. I meant Pulev w- would would beat the Chisora that fought here. You know, yeah. so it, it's it's one it's one of those. Um, but yeah, uh, one thing I will say as well about the the Caleb Plant thing, um, I loved the celebration at the end. You know, the, oh. the little, that was some yeah. savagery. That was some yeah, savagery. It was savagery. I, I liked his video afterwards when because they were saying he'd taken it too far, but he was just like, "No, nah, I'm just squashing the, I'm just burying the beef, bro." I loved it. That was I slick. That. that was, was slick, slick because 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 if he just said the wrong thing in that moment, you know, the, you, so it could have been taken the wrong way and it might have became a bigger thing than what it was. He was very slick with it. He handled that. that well, you know. He handled it well, and he knows what to say to the to the media and the press and, yeah. and what to say in interviews. He had that little smile on his face as well yeah, when he was saying it. I was like. I was yeah. like, yeah. yeah. It's like, you know what? It's like he does, um, he can act a certain way in a ring, but he says the right things out of the ring. And I think, yeah, I, I, that's why I like him. Uh, he's, a, he's a great fighter and I think he's entertaining and I think he's, he says the right stuff. Like the good, like he's he's a respectful guy. He's respectful to his opponents and stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was that was an amazing fight. I'm excited to see who he fights next. And then there were two, two uh, massive ladies fights. They actually sold... Uh, two million. Um, it was like two million uh, people tuned in to watch those ladies fight, which is a world record. It's never 
uh, the most ever watched um, for ladies fighting. Uh, which and is it was, the, it was the first it was the first ever all female card as well so right. it was it was it was historic um it was historic. yeah it was great it was historic and, and it did really well as as well so commercially yeah. so yeah, yeah. It, was, it was it was fantastic you know yeah um i felt a little bit hard i felt, felt a little bit hard done by for mayor because i thought that was a close fight between bam gardner um clarissa shields um was um you know her output's amazing. She threw so many punches, um, and I think it was the right decision. Um, I don't see how what's gonna. I don't see how that's gonna continue or who she'll fight next. But that was definitely a definitely a good fight, mate. Yeah, one hundred percent. I would like to see Baumgartner and Mia again. I would like to see that fight happen again because to me there wasn't a clear cut winner. That yeah. that should have been a draw in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, I think, I think yeah, that's but, fair. Yeah, yeah. I, from, I, a neutral, I, 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 from a neutral perspective, you know, we're both British. We're watching a two Americans fight. I don't care who wins that fight. I'm watching it from a neutral yeah. perspective. We've got Bam Gardner, who's American. We've got May, who's American. If I look at it in a neutral position, I'm saying that's not enough for either of them to win. And I'm calling yeah. it a draw. I'm giving it a draw. Yeah. And I'm no, I am agree. That again. Um, Definitely. And uh, another ladies' fight as well that's exciting it's coming up is uh, Chantel Cameron and Jessica McCaskill. That'll be a good one because Chantel Cameron can throw and McCaskill's kind of like kind of uh, can throw too, but she's also kind of like in the pocket. She can, she can, she's got a big variety of punches, and I'm excited to see that one. Um, yeah, that's definitely. I'll just take it back to Clarissa, Clarissa Shields and, yeah. um, and Savannah Marshall for for just a, just a quick moment. Um, I expected Marshall. To, to, to get a knockout victory in that fight. Um, and that's what I predicted as well. Um, so for that reason and that reason alone, Clarissa Shields really impressed me with the way that she fought. Yeah. I do think there was an element of Savannah Marshall kind of freezing on the big stage a little bit. I think yeah. that did, I think that did kind of play into it a little bit, but you can't you can't blame Clarissa Shields for that. You know, she turned up, she was in the foreign country, she mm-hmm. wasn't the home fighter. She had yeah. all the, she had the crowd against her and everything yeah. like that. And she went yeah. in and she used her relentless pressure, a punch mm-hmm. selection, and she 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 won the fight. Of course, Savannah Marshall made it competitive and um and everything like that, but she didn't use her attributes, she didn't use her reach, she didn't use her power. Um also, and, and also yeah. you, you you gotta respect a fighter as well that is willing to go in somebody else's backyard. There's not enough fighters that do that, unfortunately. You know, I always respect people like Tyson Fury. They'll go to another person's country where everyone's against them and win them over. Devin Haney will go to Australia and win over fans over there. And then you've got Clarissa Shields is willing to come into London and, and fight, you know, in London and, and win over there. So that always... I, I wish that would happen more, but um, skill and a certain it feels determination. More, it feels more official too, because you you don't have the home crowd behind you. You're still going to win anyway. You know what I mean? That just you're, 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 de- you're dealing with a commission that doesn't know who you are. You're dealing right. with promoters, commissions, and that yeah, just maybe that don't know know you and stuff. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I th- I, th- I think you know when you when you're fighting when you're fighting abroad, you're not just dealing with the fans you're dealing with a commission that doesn't necessarily know who you are you're dealing with um you're dealing with promoters who you know you're not you're not you're not the home fighter so yeah. it's 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 one of those that the, everything's kind of set against you so if, if you can not only win a title but defend a title of, yeah. from uh, for, uh abroad it, it, it really it really adds something to you as a champion i, I believe and you know some great fighters have done it james de gale Kel Brook, Tyson Fury, you know, the list goes on and on and on um, yeah. of, of, of examples of, of great champions and great fighters who, who, who went abroad and, and, and fought it out and made their name. Oh, Kals, how did I forget? Mm. Exactly. The, the list just goes on and on and on of, of these legendary fighters who have, uh, who, who've made that journey abroad and, and brought home gold, you know? Yeah, yeah, man. Absolutely. Well, and there's some good fights coming up. Um, We'll be post talking about it in the coming weeks. But yeah, it's been another episode of Another Round.